Hey, welcome to Trucks. We are gonna start a brand new build up today on this very average, very stock 2003 Jeep Wrangler. Now this, this kind of looks like something that you would deliver the mail with, not go run a trail in. We're gonna change that, but we're gonna do it a little different. The guy that owns this Jeep is a young guy by the name of Galen Davis, brand new to the off-roading sport, wants to get more into it. Are you a four-wheeler? Have you ever gone four-wheeling before? Not on purpose, but we had to when the winter hit. <laughs> so you'd like to get into the four-wheeling stuff a little bit? Yeah, go have fun. His father, Maury Davis, great guy, very supportive, heck, bought the Jeep for his kid, also likes cars and trucks, just as much as his son does. Uh, my dad, uh, when I was growing up, had uh, he had a 1970 Ranchero GT that was that was a hot rod, and I had that until just a few years ago. The real kicker here is that neither one has any idea what I'm going to do to this Jeep. I'm scared, Stacy. Don't be scared. I'm scared. You know the fact that you're going to take this thing and like not tell me what you're going to do to it until we change it is the scary part. And okay. since I have to drive it every day to school, so I got to go to work. He does have to drive it every day. No, I mean, obviously, you're fixing to redo this Jeep, and uh, but only because I trust you am I going <laughs> to buy a brand new vehicle and go away. Of course, sometimes fathers and sons don't exactly agree on what they'd like to see done. I don't know. I'd put a winch on it, probably. Um, I might put a, like the, the grill in front of it for the bushes and stuff just to give it the look. I might not. I depends. Put mm -hmm. fog lights on it. What do you want to winch on your What are you going to winch? I don't know. In a few years, I might decide to take your mud. If we go mud, so you got to hook yourself to a tree to pull out. <laughs> like when I got in that ditch. <laughs> That's what we have a tractor for, son. If you could make this the ultimate Jeep, what would it be? First, I'd like I'd raise it up, probably. Like how high? I don't know. I'd probably put 33, 1250s on Not it. real high, because I have to get up in it every now and then, and, <laughs> yeah. and I'm kind of short-legged. So, so when you say real high, what are you, what are you talking about? It's pretty high right now. No, it's not. <laughs> now, as you can see, they both said what they think they want, but that's not what they want. So I'm going to take this Jeep, and I'm going to give them what they really want. This is it. Oh, that's right, man. What a lot of people think is the ultimate Jeep Wrangler, the one from the movie Tomb Raider 2. Now, you can't buy the Jeep from the movie, but I'm going to show you how to build your own that's going to look and perform every bit as good or better than what you saw on the screen. So, take one last look at this nice, innocent little TJ, because we're going to make sure it never looks like that again. The first thing we need to do is deal with that suspension, get it up in the air. But not just for looks, no, no, we need something that'll handle some off-road stuff. But not too radical because, of course, Galen's just a beginner. So, we went to Skyjacker and got this 4-inch rock-ready system. Now, this is not just a lift kit, obviously. This is a complete rock-crawling suspension. Now, what you get is new springs, front and rear, all kinds of hardware, sway bar end links, disconnects for the front, you've got an adjustable track bar, shocks, upper links. Now your lower links are not only considerably longer, bigger, stronger, they've also got these huge heim joints at each end. And these mount down into this subframe assembly. Now those heim joints are going to give you all kinds of flex and movement. You get that Jeep off-road, you get that axle articulating, those are key. Now the cool thing about this Rock Ready system is it's upgradable. So as Galen's confidence grows off-road, he wants to go bigger and badder, all he's got to do is call up Skyjacker, get new springs, some links, a few hardware pieces. He can go to 6 inches, 8 inches, 10 inches of lift on this same system. That's pretty cool. All right, let's get this thing in the air, get to work. Now it's time to get serious. First, we're going to pop off these old shocks. the steering damper, the drag link, now the track bar, pull off the stock pitman arm, and finally the sway bar end links. 
Now, using a jack, we'll lower the axle down and we'll pull out the springs and the bump stops and add those to our growing pile of junk. Now that we've got everything pretty much disassembled, it's time to move on to the good stuff. And we're gonna start with these upper links. Now the new links, well, they just bolt in place of these stockers, but take a look at this. These stock links are just stamped steel with a rubber bushing at one end. <laughs> There's not much flex going on here. The new pieces, thick piece of tubing, heim joint at one end. Guys, there is no comparison here. The difference in the new springs is even more obvious. These absolutely dwarf the stockers. And this is only a four inch lift, but believe it or not, these just slide into place and you just jack up the axle to hold them in. All right, now it's time to turn our attention to these lower links. Now, I've already talked about how much stronger and beefier they are, but how about how much longer they are? Now, this is a key factor in us getting that articulation and flex that we're after. Unfortunately, it also brings up an issue. These are the two points where the stock link mounted, and this is where our new link is gonna go. Oops, looks like we got us a problem, doesn't it? Nah, got the answer over there on the table, but I'm gonna show it to you after the break. Hey, welcome back to Trucks and Project Tomb Raider Rubicon, where I'm taking a new Jeep Wrangler and turning it into a rig like you saw in the movie Tomb Raider 2. Except, this is gonna be real, it's gonna be functional, and it's something that you can do. The best part is, the guy that owns this rig has no idea what I'm doing to it. He thinks I'm doing an oil change or something. Oh, he's in for a surprise. Now we're in the middle of putting on a Skyjacker four inch lift. Let's get back to it. Ah yes, a couple more pieces for Galen to take to the swap meet. Now we are ready for these lower links. <laughs> there is no way that these big suckers are gonna fit where those original pieces were. So, that's where this subframe comes in. Now it goes on between the skid plate and the frame, and it supplies mounting points front and rear for those lower links. Now notice, we've ground the paint away in this area on both the frame and the subframe because you need to structurally weld this area that's the only way this is gonna be strong enough to support those lower links. These bolts alone are not gonna get it. Also, this old bracket, that needs to be cut off because we're not gonna use that again. First, using the plasma cutter, I'm gonna cut the brackets off flush with the frame to get them out of the way. Then we'll cut down the weld bead with the cutoff wheel and knock the rest off with an air chisel and a big old hammer. Then we'll finish it off with a grinder so you won't ever know it was there. Now we'll grab the welder and permanently join the new subframes to the original Jeep frame rails. Remember, when you're MIG welding on a newer vehicle, don't forget to disconnect your battery or you could fry the computer. Unfortunately, the last few steps we had to do were gonna take our difficulty meter up into the advanced area because of the tools I had to use. But, end result's gonna be worth it. Finally, we can slide in the lower links and bolt them on. The factory skid plates and cross members also need to be modified to fit around those new subframes. So, we'll take the template that comes with the kit, set it in place, Mark around it, and then cut it out. With the skid plates back on, it is time to start putting this front end together. I've already got the shocks in place. Now I'm working on these sway bar end links with these double disconnects. The new adjustable track bar is up next, and what this does is keep the axle from moving laterally or side to side. Now the original track bar came down mounted under the axle. Now this kit will relocate it here to the top of the axle, and that'll give us better axle articulation and also prevent bump steer. Finally, with the new drop pitman arm installed and the drag link back in place, we can put on the steering stabilizer. 
and it goes right here on the bracket and then connects to the drag link. Now that brings us up to a break. I'm going to finish up here, put on these new brake hoses, and when we come back, we're going to do the rear, put some wheels and tires on this thing. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome back to Trucks. We are in the process of putting a four inch lift on a Jeep TJ, calling it Project Tomb Raider Rubicon. Why? Because when it's done, it's gonna look very similar to what you saw in the movie Tomb Raider 2. Now, I've already got the lift on the front, time to move on to the rear. I've got the shocks off, sway bar end links, track bar. Now it's time to lower the jack and get those springs out of there. Before we put those new springs in, you need to bolt in this track bar drop bracket. Now it goes right where the original track bar went, but it raises the location of the bar. So you just slide the original bar into it, bolt it on with the original hardware. Then put in the new upper links, and you just slide into the stock location, go on with the factory hardware. Now you can slide in the springs. Since our subframes are already in place, putting in these new lower links is just a matter of bolting them in. But we have to come in here and cut off these lower brackets on the rear just like we did on the front. Now once they're off, we'll go in with a grinder, smooth it all down, you'll never know those were there. Now make sure you're not getting in a hurry and forgetting to do little details like this because like I always say, it's all about the details. Now all we have to do is bolt on these new lower links, the sway bar end links, put on the shocks, that takes care of our suspension. Now, there is no way I'm going to put those little weenie wheels and tires back on here. Got some special Tomb Raider wheels. Check this out. This combination is from Roberts Motor Company. Now you have your polished aluminum rim, same style as what you saw in the movie, right down to this simulated bead lock on the outer rim. Now this gives you a tough, rugged, off-road look. But what the Jeep in the movie did not have is this Super Trick TR2 Rubicon center cap. Now this is whittled out of billet aluminum, goes right over your lugs for a super clean, smooth look. Now, those rims are wrapped in Pro Comp Mud Terrain tires, size 35, 1250. Now this is a good on-road and off-road tire, perfect for somebody like Galen, who's gonna be on the highway most of the time, then venture out on the trails on a weekend. Well, that's it, and this is how a Jeep should look, and it'll handle some moderate off-roading too. Now, if you want to get more serious with 35s and 4 inches of lift, I promise you, you're going to get into the body and you're going to damage it some. So, you may want to put on 6 inches of lift. Now, a taller tire means you may want to swap some lower gears in, 456s, something like that, get you some grunt on that low end when you're running the trails. Now, is that it for this project? Heck no, man, we're just getting started. This pile's gonna grow a whole lot more before we're done. Anytime you look at a big rig, two things immediately jump out at you. How powerful they are and how big they are. Now, we've talked about these rigs a lot in the past, how they're set up, what makes them tick, but we have never taken you underneath one. So, if you've ever wondered what the frame and the suspension is like under here, you're going to want to see this. We're going to show you how it works. How it works is brought to you by WyoTech. The first thing that's worth noticing is how simple it is. Large, but simple. You got leaf springs and shocks, no airbags. You got a solid axle and kingpins, pretty much the way they've been building trucks since the beginning of time. Why? It's simple, it's reliable, and it works. Now, we've got a couple of tanks here and Dan Johnson to tell us what those are. <laughs> we've got some air tanks here, we've got some fuel tanks here. Um, in the old days, you were able to see those. 
uh, from the outside. Mm -hmm. But today you don't, you don't see them hardly in any trucks anymore because we've got this skirting right here that covers them on the outside. The purpose for this skirting is for aerodynamics, for better fuel economy. Keeps turbulence from going up underneath. Kind of, sure does. Kind of like a race car, huh? Sure does. It's <laughs> just like that. Yeah, now something that's worth noticing is the design of this. Now notice the transmission will not come out unless you take these tanks out first. And we've all been there before. We have been there. <laughs> yeah, look at my hands, man. Then we've got this huge drive shaft. You've got the carrier bearing. Now the frame is worth looking at. This is just an open sea channel. Dan, what's the deal with that? We don't want them very rigid. Um, we're talking about carrying 80,000 pounds on these trucks. Um, if they're very rigid, um, we're probably going to crack or, or break the frame. And so we want that flexibility, and that's the purpose. Now if you want to see this in action, next time you see one of these things take off from the stoplight, you watch that frame twist. There's a lot of torque going on there. There's no kidding. See those cabs rocking? Oh, yeah. It feels good in the driver's seat, doesn't <laughs> it? Does. it? Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the back here. All right, Dan. Very interesting suspension we've got back here. What are we looking at? We've got a, a piece of iron here that looks kind of like a leaf spring, but it's really not. We've got a pivotal point up front that works all the way back to where it ties into our actual suspension, which is the airbag. Okay. Now, you've got airbags on each axle. On each axle. Okay, yes. and that's your real suspension. Yes, it is. All right. Now this air canister for your brakes. For our brakes, we have actually yeah. the parking brake and our service brake, of course, all actuated with air. Okay. Front axle, obviously. Now how do we get power to the rear axle? It's what we call our through shaft that comes through the rear, tied into our inner axle drive line that feeds our rear differential. And those are some huge U joints, They're aren't awesome, they? Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, air brakes in the rear. Yes, air brakes back here. These are just service brakes in the in the rear axle back here. Okay. Well, there you have it. That should give you an idea what's going on under one of these big rigs. Not only that, but you've been a place where very few people have been standing underneath a big rig. Kind of makes you a little nervous, doesn't it? Yeah, does. I'm a little nervous. Don't let it fall. <laughs> you kind of feel like roadkill now. I'm right? sure enough. <laughs> In the world of custom trucks, one of the most popular areas to modify is your doors. You can chop them, you can shave them, you can gull wing them, you can roadster them, you can suicide them, heck, <laughs> you name it. Well, now you have yet another choice because AutoLock has come out with this Lamborghini door kit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This will modify your doors to where they'll flip forward like a Lamborghini Countach. Now, obviously, the secret to this kit is in these special hinges. Then you have linear actuators to lift the door for you. Then you have the brackets and all the hardware to put them in. Then, of course, you can get a remote system. So all you do is push a button and pff, up come the doors. So if you want your doors to open like an exotic, sounds like you need AutoLock's Lambo door kit. That's it for today. We'll see you next week.